Bonjour, bonjour les amis. Bienvenue à Tours. Welcome to the Loire Valley. I have a special stroll for you today. And I hope you enjoy it. We are in a beautiful neighborhood in Tours, a very residential neighborhood known as Les Prébandes. And I am going to take you inside a magnificent garden. It's looking great, though it's the end of the summer, the end of August. Could you let me know if you can hear me okay? Thank you. Thank you for confirming the sound is good for you. So as you can see, these pretty buildings on the side are quite, they're not grand. They're not what I would call stately, but they are very elegant. And these are known as les particuliers tourangeaux. Particulier from hotel particulier. As you know, this doesn't refer to a hotel. But in Paris, for example, in the 19th century, hôtels particuliers referred to big private mansions. Here in Tours, those buildings are referred to as les particuliers tourangeaux. Tourangeaux is the adjective in reference to Tours, that belongs to Tours. They vary a little bit along these streets around the park we're going to visit, but typically they would have two floors built on a cellar, and we will see why later, with a few steps that you can see here leading to the front door. Some of them have three floors, but typically they would have two, and the facade would be made of that uh, very soft stone, beautiful white soft stone you find here in the Loire Valley known as Le Tufau, T-U-F-F-A-U. -F -F you can see some really nice balconies as well. And the sun that's been playing hide and seek with us this afternoon seems to be back. Perfect timing, sun. Merci. Welcome, friends. Bienvenue if you just joined us. If this is your first stroll with me, my name is Véronique Vero. I am a tour guide. 16 months ago, I became a virtual tour guide. And ever since that time, I have been taking you, my viewers in the Friends with Vero community, all over Paris, where I used to live until very recently, and all over France whenever I travel. But I am now based in the beautiful Loire Valley, in a city I really fell in love with called Tours, T-O-U-R-S. Here is the main entrance to the park we're going to see, the garden we're going to see. And I have some really nice stories to tell you about Tour, about 19th century Tour in particular, and about this garden. Quite a nice entrance. Here is the name of the garden if you want to look it up later. Le Jardin des Prébandes d'Oe. Les Prébandes. This is a a word that in the Ancien Régime, so before the French Revolution, referred to a tax that local gardeners would have to pay to the local church to be able to uh, work the land. This used to be a pretty swampy area. Bonjour. This used to be a pretty swampy area and they had um, people worked here. They grew vegetables and fruit and they paid this tax to the church. So here we are inside the beautiful Jardin des Prébandes. It is one of a little over 400 Jardins Remarquables in France. Les Jardins Remarquables is a quality labor, uh, label sorry, that's awarded to very special green spaces in France, whether public or private. Uh, because of their botanical value, because of their aesthetics, because of history that happened there. Uh, and this garden, Le Jardin des Prébandes in Tours, is one of them. And it's a very special place. It's a favorite park in the city. We have quite a few green spaces here. We're lucky. 
but I thought I would take you here to show you this uh, uh, garden and you're going to see some pretty incredible trees and you'll understand why when I tell you how old this place is. Um, in the 1920s they added some statuary here and um, they're usually honor uh, local artists, writers. This is uh, Pierre de Ronsard, Pierre de Ronsard, the famous writer from the Renaissance, the 16th century. And I like that they have those old photos here where they show you what the park looked like in the 1900s when a lot of the statues were added. This is 1924 and um, the statue was uh, done by a local sculptor who's very well known, Georges Del Perrier. You can see it's looking a little older now, of course, but it's lovely. So I'm going to take you back in time. You know, I like to connect the past and the present on my uh, virtual tours and we're going to do exactly that today. I'm going to take you back to the 19th century, to the second half of the 19th century in fact, to the Second Empire when Napoleon III ruled France. And we're going to need to talk about uh, some uh, landscapers and while I'm walking and strolling I'm going to try and show you as many of these beautiful trees as I can. When we were in Paris just a few months ago, and you can find all these, uh, all the replays of all these tours on my uh, YouTube channel, France with Vero, I took you through some beautiful uh, Parisian gardens like uh, Le Parc Monceau, where I used to live in the 17th arrondissement, Le Square des Batignolles, or Les Buttes Chaumont in the northern section of Paris. And when we were there, we talked about the 19th century, about about Napoleon III, about all the parks and gardens and green spaces he developed for Parisians at that time. And we mentioned some famous landscape artists or engineers like Barrier des Champs or Alphand, for example. Well, there were, there were more, there were others. And in fact, there were two brothers, the Buhler brothers, B-U-H-L-E-R. The name is from Switzerland originally. Their father owned a nursery uh, in Paris and so they grew up in the business you might say and they got trained in Paris they went to top schools to become landscape artists and like Alphand like a lot of them they ended up working not just for the political elite at the national level for the emperor or the local level but they also worked for the nobility and sometimes for cities uh, cities that commissioned uh, some green spaces they wanted to develop and this is what the Bueller brothers did here you can look up their name. They did a lot of work all over France. In fact, you can go to Béziers in southern France. You can go to Brittany or Normandy, uh, Brittany, Rennes. Um, there's another garden they did here in Tours. So very, and, and I think one of their most famous ones is probably the beautiful Parc de la Tête d'Or, the a park of the Golden Head in Lyon. It's the largest green space in Lyon. So they, are, they were quite famous at the time. Here's another picture. I'll try and show them to you when I see them. You see our kiosk à musique, our gazebo, and you can see the trees back when they were planted in the 1870s. And look at them now. So here we mention marronnier, which is your chestnut tree and some cypress trees as well. So of course it's changed a lot. A lot of the structures, the buildings, the statues were added at the turn of the 20th century before World War I. But the park itself was commissioned before the 1870s and was completed between 1871 and 1874. It took about three years to do this. And we're looking at 10 acres roughly. So the Bueller brothers were well known for their love of English style gardens. They were quite in fashion. After several centuries of the French style gardens, you know, the order, the symmetry that you find in places like Versailles, the English style garden became really trendy in the 19th century and the Bueller brothers were famous for that. So we're going to talk a little bit about it. This is one of the features, in fact, of the English style garden they loved in the 19th century. The waterfall. We've seen those, remember, in the Square des Batignolles in the 17th arrondissement. We've seen them uh, at the Butte Chaumont, 
We've seen them just about everywhere in those parks that I've taken you to in Paris. Now, what's interesting to know is that these that look just like wood are actually made of cement or concrete, if you want. This is what they did at the time. The same about the rocks. The rocks were not always real rocks. But the waterfall, definitely a feature of the 19th century English style romantic park. And in the background, the park was designed to highlight what would become one of the trendiest neighborhoods in town, though at the time it was only middle-class families. It was middle-class mostly, but now it's become a really coveted neighborhood. Welcome if you just joined us. This is your friend Vero. As I like to say, your best French friend in France. And France, I, I love to show you France wherever I am, wherever I'm traveling. And I do this virtually in live tours on Facebook or on YouTube and always on social media. Thank you for mentioning to like the video. That's actually very helpful if you do that. If you subscribe to the YouTube channel, it's even better. But if you like the video, it tells YouTube that you're enjoying it and then they share my stuff more. So thank you for doing that whenever you enjoy some things I did. See those little boys having a great time? You see benches, another feature of the 19th century park with the legs meant to look like, uh, like tree branches, really. So it all blends in, right? It has to be lush. It has to be romantic. The alleyways are never straight, very different from a French style garden. The alleyways will be curved. The trees will be grouped in a bosque, that's called a bosque, B-O-S-Q-U-E-T, which is roughly a grove. But when they want to attract your eyes to a focal point, to a specific tree, they will just put it separately from the others. We have over 400 trees here. And since I told you the park was built between 1871 and 1874, some of these trees are 150 years old. So it's a little sad to think Eugene Bueller, the brother, one of the two brothers who designed this park, never really saw the trees at maturity. They were all kind of the same height at the time. But now, of course, they've blossomed into the giants they were meant to be. We have chestnut trees. We even have plane trees, the famous platane the French love so much. And another essential feature of a neighborhood park, especially in the 19th century and early 20th century, is, is your kiosque à musique, your gazebo, where locals can meet, the bands play, they celebrate the national holiday or other events, there could be a military parade. And you have these in, even in Parisian neighborhoods. I think I took my club members to a beautiful neighborhood in the 17th, known as Zepinette, where there was a lovely little garden with a lovely little uh, gazebo like this one. In case you're wondering what these people are doing, I met them earlier. This is a poetry club, volunteer-based, and every Friday through the summer, they have invited local authors to read poetry. And this is, the gentleman told me, this is the last one tonight. He wanted me to read something, and I said I was working and I didn't have time. <laughs> so they'll be reading poetry in a little while, just for locals, and they've been doing this through the summer, which is lovely. So as you can see, still a very important neighborhood life here in Les Prébandes, the name of the neighborhood. And we have this incredible gazebo that's in very good shape. They take very good care of this park, this garden. It's undergoing some major work right now. It started in the spring and I think it will wrap up in the winter of 2022. So it's going to look even better if you come next year. You have your play area for kids quite lively. It's livelier than a Saturday, actually. It's good to do it on a Friday. No school yet. Kids return to school next week. Everybody just came back from their vacation, their summer vacation. Everybody's really tanned. Here's a nice drawing of the story of the park. 
where you can see what happened with the trees when they were planted, all of them. And then around 1900, they were starting to show different heights. And today, 150 years later. So it's a shame that the Bueller brothers never really saw it like this. And here's a map. Another essential feature of the uh, 19th century English style garden is the water, fe water feature in the, in the middle of the park. You can see here there's almost like a lake and the lake has an island and they have placed uh, some really nice cypress trees in the middle of that island. It brings a lot to the park. We've seen this in the Butte Chaumont as well, in the Batignolles, everywhere. The story is this, Tour sits Downtown tour sits between two rivers, the mighty Loire, where I love to take you on Facebook, YouTube, and the Cher River. And traditionally, there have been arms of the Cher River that have crisscrossed the city. Somebody's very unhappy. Oh boy, this one has a career in the opera coming. Well done, sir. <laughs> so these are little streams that went off of the Cher River used to flood the neighborhood up until the 1860s. So eventually the city addressed that, buried a lot of them. Well, would you believe that under our feet right now is a large stream, which is known as the Ruisseau de l'Archevêque, the Archbishop's Stream. It runs, it literally crosses the city, starts in the suburbs and crosses the city from east to west. And when the Bueller brothers developed or created the park, they used the water from the stream to create, from scratch, this lake. I'm not supposed to step on the grass, but I think I will, because everybody has the summer. That's why the grass is showing some strain. Plus, what a nice view across from us of these buildings, those particulier Tourangeau, those uh, buildings I told you about. Lots of birds too. In the trees, uh, ducks, you'll see them as we go around. The flowers are starting to look a little bit overgrown as they did in Paris when I was there last week. But I saw they had started planting some fall color as well, so that's nice. I'm glad you're enjoying this tour, thank you. Those tall trees you see ahead of us right here are the cypress trees that stand in the middle of the island I was telling you about. So they have grouped them because this is something they did in the English style garden. They create perspective. They want your eyes to just keep going. They don't want to block your view with anything. And they take you through, it's like creating a story, different environments, different worlds. And this is exactly what they did here in Les Prébandes. See how tall they are? So in the 19th century, exotic trees were in, which is why here you will find um, cedar trees, you will find tulip trees from Virginia, uh, the gingo uh, biloba, that's a tough one to say, uh, lots of um, sequoias as well, and a few statues honoring, this one honors a general who fought in the uh, Revolutionary Wars in the, at the end of the 18th century and some nice green spaces where locals can relax. And this is why the park was created. It was a wish of Napoleon III to do this for Parisians in Paris and then all over France. So a lot of cities did this. And they commissioned this park and the Bueller brothers took up the challenge. And I would think, hopefully you agree with me, they did a nice job. Exactly, creating a story, you're right. It's like, it's like a canvas, right? And, and that's what they do in the English style garden, le jardin paysager in French. They create little different spaces. And look at this little guy. Cherubs were really big too in the 19th century. <laughs> no, 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 no. C'est pas vous, monsieur. Vos pieds, oui. The gentleman doesn't want to be on camera, so I told him I filmed his feet. He blocked my view. I was going to show you the statue. 
The French are pretty, uh, can be pretty picky about being filmed, so be careful. Look at these pretty ones here. This looks like full color to me. And of course, the beautiful architecture. It's a big rectangle. So you have this beautiful architecture, four streets all around it. I agree. They are important, these parks and green spaces, to our mental health. Over there is another structure, which is a house for pigeons. But it's all fenced in. I can't go in, so I won't go there. I'm going to take a ride here to show you another structure, which is a second gazebo. You always have a bunch of teenagers playing here. And look, this looks like wood as well, but it's not. It's concrete. Look at that. 21st century meets 19th, 19th century right here with this music and these kids. I wonder what the Bueller brothers would say if they saw them play here, but they'd be happy maybe. Here's the island again with the tall cypress trees in the middle. So this park, which is really a big, a big deal in Tours, everybody knows it here and loves it. This park um, has inspired quite a few artists and writers. And um, for example, Honoré de Balzac, the local son, I mentioned him almost every time I do a virtual tour in Tours, Balzac mentioned the Parc des Prébandes in some of his work. And this gentleman did too. You see this is cut to be his face. I'm going to try and stand exactly where you can see him. This is Léopold Sédar Sangor. He was a French and an African uh, civil servant, politician, but he was also a professor. And he actually taught French and Latin classes at the university here in Tours, or at a local school. He was from Senegal. And so a few years ago, they created this statue and dedicated it to him. That's his face, you see, with his glasses. I'm not sure you can see it that well. And uh, because he, he wrote a poem dedicated to the Jardin des Prébandes. You can look it up. Another interesting thing about this park is that it was originally designed in the 1860s during the Second Empire. But by now you all know that uh, Napoleon III eventually picked a fight, uh, picked up a fight with the Prussians and lost the war to Prussia. In 1870, he was defeated in Sedan, and that was the collapse of the Second Empire. And there were months and months of turmoil after that. The Prussians besieged Paris and Parisians starved for three months. Then an armistice was signed at the beginning of 1871. And eventually the Parisians refused the armistice. And this was the start for several months until the spring of what we know as La Commune, the Commune uprising. And this really disrupted the economic life in Paris, but also here in Tours. Many men from Tours fought during the Franco-Prussian War in 1870. And a lot of men after the war were unemployed. So building this garden was a way for the city to create jobs. A little bit like what Franklin Roosevelt did in the 1930s in the United States after the big crash in 1929. He created a lot of uh, um, public works projects. Well, this is what the city of Tours essentially did here in Les Prébandes, so they could employ, hire local men and give them jobs. This view, they tell you, was created to have a beautiful view on Les Particuliers Tourangeaux, those beautiful buildings. And that's, a, that's about where we started this stroll. But because this is summer and you see the trees are really overgrown now, you can't really see the buildings. But when they created it, they created it, like I said, to give you a very pretty perspective, not just on the garden, but on the buildings that were behind it. And you can see a family on the bridge. This is probably around 1900. They're feeding, feeding the swans. You see the father and the children and the mother. Everybody's dressed really nicely. And so the kids still do that today with their moms or their dads and just throw a toss food at the, uh, at the birds over there. We have a little time, so I'm going to take another spin around this section and then I'll take you back to the entrance. 
If you are into trees and plants and if you come here, you'll be happy because a lot of them have uh, tags and they tell you everything about them, where they came, where they came from, etc. Um, and here is a tiol, linden tree, and they tell us it was planted, it, it used to be cultivated before 1840. So when you come to Tua, it can be a little bit of a stroll. It's about a 15, 20 minute stroll from the historic heart of Tour, where I take you very often, uh, because this is a residential neighborhood now and a coveted one at, at that. So what I didn't say is at the beginning, uh, it was the middle class who moved here. And so you had office workers, uh, some, um, some factory workers who rented if they couldn't buy the building. So it was pretty middle class. And then over time, um, you know, a lot of people started seeing the benefit of moving into these beautiful buildings because what I didn't mention is that a lot, most of these buildings, those particulier tourangeau, actually have a garden in the back. So when I was home hunting a few months ago, I started at the beginning of the year and around March, I remember visiting a couple of them and they came off the market. I mean, they were off the market in a matter of hours and usually they would be bought by Parisians who wanted more space and um, saw the benefit of living in the heart of a big city like this with uh, more privacy on two floors uh, in a lovely and safe neighborhood with their own garden in the back. Some are so high, I have to really tilt my camera. You have your typical signs that you see in so many uh, French parks. You used to see these more in Paris, but now they let people go everywhere in Paris. But the pelouse interdite, uh, prohibited to step on the grass, used to be everywhere. I'm not sure that people really listened this summer when it was really hot, but... That used to be the norm in most public parks and gardens in France and in Paris in particular. So imagine living there in one of these uh, particulier tourangeaux, as they call them, overlooking this lovely park. Not too shabby, eh? Now the only drawback of this neighborhood and that's, I quickly understood that for me, for my taste, is that it's very residential. So you don't really have any uh, convenience shopping, magasin de proximité. So if you want to go to the grocery store, you really have to uh, either take your car or walk quite a bit. There, there is a market nearby, not too far on Sundays, but other than that, it's very residential and very quiet, a little too quiet for my taste, but I'm sure it's lovely for young families, for example. Bonjour, madame. So you have many entrances. You can access the park from different sides, really. Here's one. And as you stroll around, you'll love the architecture, of course. And like I said, some exotic trees. You see the monkey tree on the left here? It's pretty young. And look at the beautiful Hortensia hydrangeas. That's my favorite spot, I think. I love the plantings here. And still these benches. This is about where we started earlier, outside the, the gate here. Here we have a magnolia. Coming from North America and it's cold not afraid of the cold, will resist the cold. Very sturdy, they say. Oh, there it is. I was wondering where it was. That must be it. So like I said, 19th century English style garden, lots of exotic trees. There's a big taste for everything exotic at that time. 
And that is reflected in the trees that they chose here in the Jardin des Prébandes. So they take really good care of the trees. When they're really diseased, they take them down, but it doesn't happen very often, and then they immediately replace them. But a lot of them are original trees that were planted in the 1870s. The Bueller brothers, especially Eugène, who designed this garden, took care of the park for about, kept improving the park for about 10 years through the 1880s. And then after that, other people took over, of course, and that's when they started adding statues and little buildings. But uh, Eugène Bueller, Bueller is the one who uh, started it. Got to give credit where credit is due. Bonjour. Here we have a statue of a famous 17th century poet named Racan. He seems very inspired. He's holding a quill in his right hand and he's writing and looking straight ahead at bamboo. <laughs> well, of course, the garden wasn't here when he was writing, so he would have found his inspiration some, somewhere else. <laughs> This, these, uh, yeah, that's bamboo right here. Here's a nice view of the Particulier Tourangeau, those uh, buildings. You see the two floors. And so the reason they were built, you have a few uh, steps I showed you earlier leading to the front door, which is usually quite narrow. The few stairs, a few stairs is usually to prevent, you know, in case of floods. If that uh, stream that is now underground would have flooded the area, they would have been protected. And all of these were built on cellars. Uh, so you would have cellars so that the main, um, the main living space would be higher and would be protected from potential floods. And of course, the uh, slate rooftops, also typical of this region with the tufo facades. Look at this. Isn't that beautiful? I think I'm going to step on the grass. When I was a kid in France, there were guards around these public gardens. And if you stepped on the grass, they would blow their whistle and come and get you. I haven't seen one in so many years. I guess that's why a lot of gardens are not in that great of a shape anymore. Le gardien, we call them. So here are the cypress, uh, cypress trees that are in the middle of the island. These are definitely originals. And another little bridge over there. So it looks lush and it looks disorganized. But in fact, like I explained earlier, there was always a plan behind all this. And they really led you where they wanted you to go, or your eyes at least, by grouping plantings and trees with the curved alleyways. Oh, the name is, I hadn't seen this, the name Jardin des Prébandes is uh, printed here on these tiles. I can hear the poetry club over there in the microphone. No, my phone is not overheating today. You may remember if you weren't here two, two weeks ago or so, three weeks ago, it was a very hot day and I, bar I was barely 10 minutes into this virtual tour and the phone just overheated and shut down. Oh, here's a special tree here. This tree is a sequoia. I will step back later so you can see it. It came from California, and it's a don du peuple américain au peuple français, a gift from the American people to the French, to French people, à l'occasion du bicentenaire de la Déclaration des droits de l'homme et du citoyen et du Bill of Rights of the United States. So a gift of the United States to France to celebrate the bicentennial in 1989 of the Declaration of the Rights of Man and the Citizen and the American Bill of Rights. Two centuries of friendship, témoignage de deux siècles d'amitié. 
And this is a pretty amazing tree. Let me step back. There it is. So this gentleman came all the way from California in 1989, all the way to the top, right there. It's beautiful. And there are more sequoias in the park, but this one is special because it was a gift from the United States to France. Now, in case you've already followed me on other strolls, you have seen that um, there, is, um, there are some very uh, strong ties between the city of Tours and the United States. I have taken you to a place next to the Loire River by the local library, a piece of land that actually belongs to the United States where a beautiful fountain sits. And this is uh, dedicated to the SOS, the Services of Supply. They were part of the American expedi Expeditionary um, troops or services or whatever they called them at the time that uh, helped the troops during World War I and a lot of them were uh, stationed in Tours and in the area so as you go around Tours you will see quite a few uh, tributes to the United States or mentions of the United States after the most famous bridge in town is named after President Woodrow Wilson, Le Pont Wilson. Oh I'm so glad you're enjoying the stroll. Here is a reminder that Tours is also a pilgrimage, has also been a very popular pilgrimage uh, site or stop on the way to Saint-Jacques de Compostelle, Santiago de Compostela, La Voie de Tours. It was one of the ways you could get there. And if you've taken other strolls with me, you also know that Tours was one of the uh, most, the busiest, most uh, famous pilgrimage sites uh, through the Middle Ages because of Saint Martin de Tours, a former bishop of Tours, who became the famous Saint Martin de Tours. I've told you the story when we were strolling in the old part of town. Another photo from the 1900s. View of the bold cypresses, groupe d'arbres classés remarquable. Okay, so not only are we in a jardin remarquable, a remarkable garden of France that's that coveted award or quality label, by the French Ministry of Culture, but some of the trees are also classé, i.e. protected. And such is the case of these uh, cypresses that are on the island. I enjoy uh, discovering green spaces in Tours. I've seen a few already. There are some bigger ones south of us by the Cher River I haven't seen yet, but I know that I've loved the botanical garden and I'll be sure to take you there in the fall when the colors start to change because you will love the botanical garden. So we have come back now to the place where we started. The main entrance is here. If you come here, there's a restroom in that building when it's open. <laughs> so again, some people might miss Les Prébondes because it's not right in the heart of town and it takes a little bit of a walk to get here, but it's certainly worth it. I'm going to switch uh, the camera around so I can see you. Voilà les amis. For those of you who've never met me, this is what I look like, Vero. I don't like to show myself on camera too much. That's why I'm not an influencer. <laughs> so I hope you've enjoyed this new, uh, this new stroll, this new virtual tour in the beautiful uh, city of Tours where I live now. Um, I might pop in or pop by on Facebook on Friends with Vero a little later because I'm kind of trying to sneak my way into an event in town, a musical event. And if that works out and if there is good coverage there, I might pop and just pop by on Facebook to show you the sites and to share the experience with you because that is what I do. So next week I'm heading back to Paris quickly so I can fly to the United States. I'm not being very French. I did not take my vacation in July or August when everybody else did. But I see everybody's returning to town now and I'm the one who's leaving. I'm going to be taking time off in September. I'll be in the United States 
And like I did for 23 years, looking at Seattle, the West Coast and California through the eyes of a French native, I will probably pop by once in a while on Instagram, but otherwise I'm not planning on working too, too much, catching up with my son and relatives in September. Um, if you want to support my work, you can use uh, the super chats on YouTube, of course, the stars on Facebook or my uh, virtual tip jar on PayPal. All that information will be on the video notes on YouTube once it's uploaded. And um, the best way to really support me is to join the Friends with Vero Club. I have over 600 club members, my patrons. We do this on patreon.com, Friends with Vero. And I share exclusive events and content with them. In fact, I'll probably be in touch with them still. During my vacation in the United States, they have a private Facebook group. So if you want to help me and if you want to get more, if you want to see more of, of France wherever I go, then consider joining Friends with Vero on Patreon. For now, I'm going to wrap up. Thank you so much for joining me today in my beautiful new city in Tours and at probably the loveliest garden, though I think it's about a tie with the other garden I've taken you to by the Museum of Fine Arts. I love both equally, I think. So <laughs> we'll see. Maybe I'll take you back and we'll see. You'll have to vote. But thank you for joining me today. I hope you have a wonderful weekend and I might see you in a little while, in uh, an hour, an hour and a half or so. A bientôt les amis.